glitz and glamour, faded fame and mixed fortunes, comedic capers and morning after silences. For Sofia Coppola, a moment's peace is usually only found when on the move, gazing out of the window. Born into Hollywood royalty, she got her first taste of movie stardom when she was just a few months old, making an appearance in her father's film, The Godfather. Some 27 years later, she moved behind the camera for her debut feature, The Virgin Suicides. Plenty of famous kids have made a movie or two, but Sofia Coppola's work has struck a chord with viewers and critics alike. Here's a closer look at Coppola's directorial trademarks and thematic interests, and how they've made her one of the most celebrated filmmakers working today. Unsurprisingly for someone raised in Hollywood, Coppola's films are often set against a backdrop of fame. But these aren't glossy stories of the silver screen. Coppola is more interested in the minutiae of celebrity, and her characters spend more time on press junkets, photo shoots, and commercials than they do immersed in the craft of filmmaking. 2003's Lost in Translation revolves around a washed up actor on a commercial gig in Tokyo. 2013's The Bling Ring follows a group of young people breaking into luxury homes in the Hollywood Hills. Even 2006's Marie Antoinette views French royalty through a pop culture lens, casting the titular queen as a bored socialite pressured by court intrigue and frivolously diverted by fashion. Coppola's satirical take on fame is the driving force behind 2010's Somewhere, a stripped back story of a newly successful movie star who checks into the legendary Chateau Marmont and, well, checks out. When Johnny's ex-wife leaves him in charge of his teen daughter Cleo, their strained relationship becomes clear. You're really good. Thanks. When did you learn how to ice skate? I've been going for three years. Cleo helps Johnny realise the funk that he's in, and the film's most emotional moments revolve around the pair rediscovering their bond. But the majority of the movie is taken up with Johnny's search for something to distract him. He speeds around Los Angeles in his sports car, falls asleep watching pole dancers, and mechanically attends a series of publicity events. Somewhere's version of LA is sterile, almost empty. Barely anyone seems to be around. In one of the film's most striking scenes, an appointment with an effects house leaves Johnny completely covered over with plaster, identity erased. The only sign of life is a slow, rhythmic breathing. Who is Johnny Marco? Um. Beneath the flashy exterior of fame and excess, Coppola's characters experience a pervasive loneliness, a malaise that defies easy explanation. They're often found in interstitial, impersonal spaces, hotels and schools, or spaces that deny them privacy, like Versailles in Marie Antoinette or the always-watched Lisbon House in The Virgin Suicides. Most of all, they're insomniacs. No one gets a good night's sleep in a Coppola film. Lost in Translation is perhaps the best example of the director's fascination with loneliness. Charlotte is the young wife of a photographer on business in Japan, she connects with Bob, a fading movie star promoting a Japanese whiskey brand, and they develop an intimate and ambiguous relationship. In a country where neither speaks the language and neither can sleep, Charlotte and Bob bond over late night drinking sessions and excursions into Tokyo. In contrast with the quiet, lonely hotel rooms, Tokyo is portrayed as a vibrant, chaotic world of leisure, showcased through visits to arcades, pachinko parlors, nightclubs, and karaoke bars. As in somewhere, all of this surface-level fun is there to try and fill a void in the characters' lives. In Lost in Translation, it provides the catalyst for a fleeting moment of connection between Bob and Charlotte. In a quieter moment, they speak softly while falling asleep in bed together. As Charlotte opens up about her marriage, Bob softly lays his hand on her foot, a limited show of affection that speaks volumes. In exploring these themes, Coppola almost always centers her stories on young female experiences. Most significantly, The Virgin Suicides interrogates the difficult issue of teen suicide, following a group of teen boys who are obsessed with the enigmatic, painful lives of the Lisbon sisters. For the boys, the inner lives of these young women are completely mysterious, accessible only via stolen looks and keepsakes. Any attempt at direct communication with the girls is stilted and awkward. You've heard of Yale? Oh yeah. But when they're together, the Lisbon sisters speak freely, articulating a view of the world that's alien to the boys. Adults are also incapable of fully understanding what's happening to the sisters. 
After youngest Cecilia's suicide attempt, a doctor tells her, What are you doing here, honey? You're not even old enough to know how bad life gets. Obviously, doctor. You've never been a 13-year-old girl. In communicating these stories of young women, Coppola's sharp sense of humour provides much-needed levity, but suffering is always around the corner. Coppola's latest feature, On the Rocks, follows a woman reconnecting with her playboy father as they go on an adventure around New York. With its story of excess, intergenerational connection, and a female protagonist surrounded by a characterful city, it looks set to be another classic Coppola film.